What are some of the investments you guys have made that you feel particularly excited about? I think the one that's probably farthest along is nanosolar. Mm -hmm. And the reason, one of the reasons I bring that up is it has a lot of Stanford students in it, mm -hmm. and it has a lot of Stanford intellectual property in it. The basic premise behind the company, um, as, as well as the, the founder, is a, is a Stanford uh, PhD grad. Uh, he and Larry and Sergey and I all went to graduate school at about the same time. Um, the premise of the, of the company is solar is just too expensive. And if we found a way to make photovoltaic cells the same way that the nightly newspaper is printed, think about the New York Times and the machine that generates the New York Times every day um, by the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of copies in one day, um, how can we bring those printing technologies to the photovoltaics business, which to date has been bootstrapped off of the semiconductor business. So in semiconductors, you make money by making things increasingly smaller and packing more value into it. In solar, you're trying to create square kilometers of things per minute. And so the collision of those economic forces really was forcing the silicon technologies not to be able to be um, effective as a photovoltaic technology. So the idea was basically, can we move the economics of photovoltaics to the economics of printing? And uh, today the company uh, is, you know, effectively in production here in South San Jose. There must be 50 to 75 Stanford people inside the company at this point, point. Um, and, uh, and going quite well, I might say. It's, a, it's actually an a interesting one to work with. Now, when you were looking at, uh, at nanosolar as a, as a business plan or as a PowerPoint presentation, probably with a small prototype or something mm -hmm. like it, how did you evaluate the opportunity given that the, the, the solar business is not exactly, it's neither high growth today nor is it profitable? How did you evaluate the opportunity? Yeah, so, um, and, and we looked at the opportunity in late 2004. Okay. And what you saw, I think you had to have a, a couple um, observations. One, the photovoltaic market was not a domestic market. The market is driven at that time and still is today out of Japan and Germany. Oh. And so you had to know that in order to find the opportunity interesting at all. Because you, you would have walked in and said, well, come on, this isn't a domestic market. Where are we going to sell this? No one wants it, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> the second thing I think you had to understand is the market was at that time about $2 billion in product sales, but on an over 40% growth rate. So 40% of $2 billion, that's another billion. And you just kind of keep compounding the 40% along, and you realize, whoa, this is going to be, there's lots of product being sold into this business. And as price comes down, the amount grows very inelastically, meaning a small price drop causes a dramatic increase in, in desired volume. Um, so we worked on the market thesis um, and actually had that pretty well cooked before the company, we met the company. So we were actively looking for this, and I think that's one of the, the, the thesis areas uh, here in clean tech. The opportunity specifically was, do you want to work with this entrepreneur? And do you think this is the technology and the manufacturing strategy that can get it done? And so the, the manufacturing strategy is around creating a nanoparticulate ink. That's where the nano comes from. And using printing technology to create solar cells. That's where the solar comes from. The entrepreneur is actually a really interesting character. character. Martin Roshisen was one of the founders of Trading Dynamics, which sold to Ariba very early on, and was also one of the founders and CEO of eGroups, which sold to Yahoo and is effectively today Yahoo Groups. Um, so you had a repeat entrepreneur, but the entrepreneur was not experienced in this industry. So the, the risk was, can this entrepreneur learn a new area? But the entrepreneur had already demonstrated the ability to build great management teams, access capital, do a bunch of the things that are requisite in order to put a, put a startup together. And how did you decide how much to capitalize the business with? I mean, it's, it's obviously something that you could scale up pretty rapidly mm -hmm. um, or, or start small with a seed, seed kind of investment. How did you guys approach that problem? You know, I think that's one of the challenges here in, in the clean tech segment is understanding the amount of capital it takes and managing the businesses in a way so that you put enough money to get the next milestone done. And most of the time when we invest, the next milestone is a technical milestone. Mm -hmm. And so it really came As down to, to a market milestone, yeah, or a certain level of sales, get or, to ten million dollars in sales, yeah. or you know, get the product released, for example. Um, and it really comes down to sitting down with the company, and going through its operating plan, and understanding how many people months and how much innovation is required, and how much can we plan on innovation happening on Tuesday versus Wednesday, <laughs> um, and and really understanding from a bottoms up how do you put the company together. And I think that's one of the real skills. Uh, you need to have in, in our profession is understanding how do you, from a bottoms-up perspective, put 
capital and people and a plan together to make it work.